you know how it goes, right? You're sitting there, 3060 Ti becomes available, and you're like, eh, pass. I'm gunning for the 3070, and then poof, card's gone. Momentary regret. You snooze, you lose. Welcome to Machines More. I hope you got that card because nowadays a real card in your PCIe slot is better than, well, anything in that uh, AMD Q, right? But hey, Sophie's choice here. Let's say you did have to make a decision between these two cards or you wanna know which one to aim for. Can you actually stretch the 3060 Ti to catch a stock 3070? So what we're gonna do is uh, do some overclocking content here before diving headfirst into the new uh, SFF case content next week. And hopefully this will give you a few ideas on getting the most out of your build components. All right, so the 3060 Ti has 4864 CUDA cores with a reference GPU boost clock of 1670 megahertz, eight gigs of GDDR6, and the 3070 does have quite a bit more CUDA cores and a higher reference boost clock with the same VRAM. On paper, the reference price is $100 more for the 3070, but you all know how useless those reference prices are today. I mean, technically this 3060 Ti costs more than the 3070 FE that we're comparing against at Best Buy, uh, which is a pretty meaningless comparison of price because it's almost impossible to get the 3070 FE, right? And at least practically, if you can find an AIB 3060 Ti versus a 3070 from an official retailer, that gap seems to be closer to 150 to 200 dollars. So figure that's the current premium that you're paying for maybe 15-ish percent of stock performance. Now this exercise is of course silicon dependent, but I was curious here. So let's just take a look at some benchmarks for fine tuning a 3060 Ti. This Gigabyte 3060 Ti Pro is already pushed a bit harder out of the box, but you can also take a reference version and tune it to work it a little harder. Easiest way is an MSI afterburner. I won't get too much into the details on that, but for this card, I was able to squeeze out another stable 150 megahertz out of it and that got boost clocks to hit around 2050 megahertz and that is compared to the stock version which was hitting around 1900 megahertz and our 3070 fe here also runs at around 1900 megahertz and of course it's doing a lot more with each cycle i also overclocked the vram with the 3060 ti overclocked i settled in on a stable 2000 megahertz and usually for both the 3060 Ti and 3070 stock, the GDDR6 runs at 1750 megahertz. To overclock, I lifted the power limits and the 3060 Ti ran with about 10 additional watts of power draw. And even with the same fan speeds, the core temps were only about one and a half degrees higher. So it's not a huge burden thermally. And really none of these cards are tremendously hard to keep cool. So you shouldn't have any difficulty with that overclock despite uh, all these cards pulling well over 215 watts. In that Heaven 4.0 benchmark, you see that the 3070 FE gets about 15% higher here, which is what we expect. And I'm throwing the 6700 XT into the mix just to give you know, the baseline since that card is often in the conversation and a little bit more available recently, but uh, at a high price, of course. So when we take a look at the overclocked results, the overclock 3060 Ti, it's not quite there yet uh, to the 3070, but it's pretty promising. That gap seems to be closed about halfway. Now, if you take a look at a few more synthetics here in Time Spy Extreme, it's a similar gap, and that overclock does yield about the same gains. Superposition, same story here. That gap is about halfway closed. A ray tracing benchmark like Poor Royal confirms that if you're at all interested in a ray tracing title, NVIDIA is still the clear way to go here. But yeah, in all these titles, the overclocked card can't get there uh, to the 3070, but it can get pretty close. But actual gaming is gonna be a lot more interesting because depending on the title, you're gonna see some varying results here. So let's just start with Wolfenstein Youngblood. The 3060 Ti overclocked does get within about 5% here, but once you enable ray tracing, we're essentially within run-to-run -run variance between the two. And once you enable DLSS and RT, yeah, that 3060 Ti actually passes the 3070. And perhaps the faster clocked VRAM has a material impact here. For control, our overclocked card does get close, but we're not 
there yet for just rasterization. We're essentially within 5%, but once you turn on DLSS, yep, these two are within run-to-run -run variants. Red Dead 2, the gap was pretty big to begin with, but yeah, we're still a ways off with the overclock. Civ 6, again, close, but no cigar. For the titles that I tested in uh, traditional rasterization, AOE 4 was the closest that I could get to the stock 3070. But you can see here the frame times weren't nearly as consistent. And let's not forget, of course, this exercise is not considering the fact that we can also overclock that 3070 as well. And that also yields some meaningful gains over stock, but then we're just chasing our tail, right? So finally, let's check out some productivity benchmarks in CUDA rendering. The render time here with the 3060 Ti overclocked uh, can in fact surpass the 3070 FE, and with optics, it's essentially the same. For handbrake, we don't expect too much of a difference here since we are using the NVENC hardware encoder. So practically speaking, there's not a meaningful difference here. All right, so I set off here to answer the question, can you overclock 3060 Ti to match a stock 3070? And the answer is, yeah. In certain circumstances, like we saw with the DLSS and ray traced enabled titles, you could even pass the 3070, but realistically at best, you can narrow the gap to the point where it's gonna be really hard to tell the difference between the two cards. Again, this is all silicon dependent and maybe you won't get lucky, but hey, you might win the silicon lottery and end up with an OP card too, right? At the end of the day, this testing, it's a little bit of fact finding and entertainment, but well, what does this all mean in the real world? In the current environment, if you need to go card shopping, I would buy for the performance that you need right now, rather than pay a higher premium for performance you absolutely don't need. Uh, just cut your losses and if the chip shortage does get better in a few years, then that's time to think about upgrading. I mean, for the 3060 Ti, we are still talking about uh, 2080 super level of performance. And I think for the majority of gamers, and even if you're using this for productivity, I don't think the stock difference between the two is actually worth the current difference. So if you do have an opportunity to get either from an official retail channel, personally, I would choose the 3060 Ti and just tweak it to milk every last bit of goodness out of it. And uh, I don't think you're settling for much less here at all. And hey, maybe invest that change in a growth stock. Uh, how about Nvidia? And by the time this chip shortage is over, maybe you're looking at your next card right there. All right, I hope you found that entertaining. Give a like if so, subscribe if you haven't. Links are down below. Thanks for watching today.